Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Miguel Sanda. I am the lead developer and creator of the Django Ledger open source project. Django Ledger is a Python application that helps us write double entry financial ledgering applications faster, more efficient, without having to reinvent the wheel. It is based on the most popular web development framework for Python, Django, and it inherits all the benefits, the scalability, and the security features of this widely popular web development framework. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started with your new Django Ledger project in just a couple minutes. If you haven't, go to miguelsandal.com slash get started to get your free get started guide on Django Ledger, where I'm going to be covering all the basic concepts behind the application to help you keep the ground running. Stick around for more content like this. Like and subscribe to the channel. And thank you for being here. Now, let's get started. All right, guys. So the first thing that we're going to be doing here is making sure that we have the Python interpreter installed in our uh, operating system. So the best way to do that is just uh, go to a terminal or to a PowerShell on Windows and just type Python. If that doesn't work, try Python 3. And if you see an output like this, it's going to show the version of Python you have installed in your system. I would recommend the latest stable version of Python or the one prior to that, uh, just to make sure everything works as expected. Squid. If you don't have it in your system, go to python.org and go to the download section and just make sure to download the latest version for your uh, operating system. All right, the second thing we're gonna need is some working knowledge of the Django web framework. Uh, and for that, I would recommend going to their website, which is djangoproject.com and just checking out the get started with Django guide uh, or their documentation uh, they're very good at their documentation. So anything that can help you get started with the framework uh, is definitely going to be helpful for this tutorial. The third thing we're going to need is Git version control. Uh, once again, you can go to your terminal window and just type git dash dash version. If you see an output like this, it means that you have it installed in your system. Uh, if you don't, you can go to their official website uh, git-scm.com right there and you can just download it for your system okay so now we are ready to get started so the first thing that we're going to do is go to my github repository which is github.com slash arobolytics i'm going to put the link in the description below uh, and we're going to go to the django ledger starter template right there then we're gonna go to code and we're gonna copy this web URL. Uh, we're gonna go back to our terminal window. We're gonna type git clone and we can do this in our preferred uh, directory. I am right now on my desktop so you can do it anywhere you want within your operating system and you can do git clone and then you paste that in. Now our starter project has been cloned in our system. Now we can go back here to our repository and we can follow the instructions. Uh, the first thing we just did is we clone our repository. And then the next thing we're gonna do is CD into the Django Ledger starter. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is make sure we have pip EMV installed and pip EMV is uh, a package manager for Python. It just basically makes sure that we have all our dependencies installed for our project. Uh, so we can copy that and paste that in. Good, I already have it installed. So we're good there. Uh, and then we're gonna run the pip env install and pip env shell, which is going to take care of our virtual environment for development. Okay, so this is going to take a couple seconds. Um, basically, it's going to create our virtual environment. And now we're in our virtual environment uh, for Django Ledger. The next thing we're going to do is run the migrate command, which is basically going to create a database for our application. And next, we're going to create a super user. Again, we copy and we paste that in. 
basically we need a username for our application. Uh, you can use whatever you want. You can type your email address. And your password, make sure they, they match. Awesome. Now we are ready to run our development server and we can just copy the last command right here, which is our Python manage PY run server, which is a Django specific command. This is how we start our Django server for development. Great. If we see an output like this, it means that our server is up and running on a local host port 8000. So we can just go to a browser and we're going to type localhost uh, port 8000 and we're going to do slash ledger, which is the route where uh, our Django ledger project is is running. Great. So now all we have to do here is uh, log in with our user credentials. And now we have successfully logged in into our first Django ledger project. The next thing we're going to do is create our first entity and we can create a new entity by clicking right here where it says new entity. And now we are going to populate uh, the entity information. All right, so we have filled out some basic information about our new company. Uh, we have a couple options down here. Uh, we want to make sure that we activate all accounts for this tutorial. Uh, we want to populate this entity with the default code of accounts uh, that comes with Django Ledger so we don't have to create any accounts from scratch. And we also want to fill this entity with sample data. So we have something to see once this entity is created. And we hit create. All right, after a couple of seconds, uh, we're gonna see our new entity created. And next, what we can do is just go to the dashboard and uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, we have our new entity. All right, well, congratulations on creating your first entity within a Django Ledger project. Uh, feel free to get familiar with this UI. You have an aggregation menu right here where you can browse financial information of this entity based on the year, on the quarter, or the month. Also, you have a feedback button right here where you can report a bug or you can request a new feature based on your experience with Django Ledger. If you haven't, go to miguelsanda.com slash get started to get your free get started guide on Django Ledger. On this guide, I go over some of the concepts of the Django Ledger core model and I also provide some practical examples to help you get started developing financially driven applications. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for your time today. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below and I'll see you in the next one.